Reading the purchase contract can really be a pain in the beat. So why read the whole book when you can read a cheat sheet? Well, I'm not saying that don't put in effort and do, do your work. All I'm saying is use strategies, bro, when they're available. So in today's video, I'm going to be presenting to you a very simple way of understanding the purchase contract that will not only save you time, but will save you thousands of dollars. So before we get started, let's define what a purchase contract is. A purchase contract is a binding agreement between a buyer and a seller when purchasing real estate. And this contract protects both the buyer and the seller against unforeseen circumstances. But in today's video, I will be speaking from the buyer's perspective. So how does the contract protect you? It protects you if the right contingencies are placed in the contract and written out correctly. So what are those contingencies? There are th three main contingencies. If you understand these three main contingencies, you will pretty much understand the purchase contract. So let's get started. Number one is the appraisal contingency. If you are financing your transaction and a lender is financing it, they want to make sure that the pr property that they're financing is actually worth that much. So for example, if you're purchasing a property in the Bay Area for $800,000 and uh, you, the lender sends out the appraisal to see the property and now the appraisal comes back at $750,000, well, this contingency protects you. So now you you're in a position where you can go back to the seller and say, hey, we, the contract says 800,000, but the property value came back at 750. So you have, the, you're in a position to say either come down and meet me at the, at what we, uh, what the appraisal came at, or you can just say, bye bye, I'm leaving and you're entitled to getting your money back and not losing your deposit. Number two is the loan contingency. So if you are financing the transaction, what's going to happen is, uh, uh, you know, the lender, once the transaction closes, the lender is going to fund the money. But in that process, if something goes wrong, say unforeseen circumstance happened, uh, you lose your job randomly, or the loan officer missed something in the preliminary uh, approval process and the loan for some odd reason cannot go through, through, well, you're protected with this contingency now. So you can say, go back to the selling party and say, hey, the, the loan didn't go through. Sorry, we have to move forward. We cannot move forward with this transaction anymore. And you can get your money back. Number three, not last but the least, is property inspection contingency, a very, very important contingency, uh, which says that you have the right to do your due diligence on this property. You can get a property inspe overall inspection, a roof inspection, a foundation inspection, and do all your homework to make sure the property that you're buying um, is intact. There's nothing wrong with the foundation. The roof is good. There's no pests and termites in the house. So just in case if something comes up, um, on the property inspection report, this contingency protects you. Again, you can go back to the seller, either ask the seller, hey, there's $11,000 of termites in the house. So either lower the price to, to $11,000 or fix this for me. And if uh, the, bar, the seller says no, uh, then you as the, as the buyer can uh, easily walk away and, and get your money back. So these are the three main contingencies that if you understand them and uh, you, you understand what they mean and you apply them correctly on there, uh, you're good to go. You don't need to read the whole contract verbatim, even though it's good to you know, read the contract, but you don't have to if you understand these contingencies. But a very, very important catalyst in this whole equation is your real estate agent and the way he communicates. So it's very important you work with somebody who understands how to write these contingencies and also understands how to communicate uh, with all the parties involved in this transaction. Because for example, if, uh, he, he, if he doesn't communicate, or he or she, sorry, doesn't communicate correctly with the loan officer on the transaction and say, uh, takes off that contingency prematurely, you're in trouble there. And the same thing applies with appraisal. If he moves the appraisal contingency or she moves the appraisal contingency beforehand, there could be a mess. So that's a very, very important part of this whole equation that work with somebody um, who knows and who communicates really well. Again, guys, if this was insightful to you, please show me some love, share and comment. And don't forget to follow us so you can stay on top of your real estate game. Until next time, this is Karan Singh with Optimal Home.